Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my feeder creatures that I have. I have springtails right here. I have grindle worms down there. I also have crickets. I don't know if you can hear them in the background. And yeah, we're just going to take a look at them and I'll show you exactly how I take care of them and such and who eats what and yada yada yada. So let's get to it. So before anybody asks, yes, I am in my pajamas. This is the most comfortable outfit after you get done working during a severe thunderstorm where you have tornado warnings going off everywhere. But anyways, let's take a look at my let's take a look at my grindle worms, my white worms right here. Oh, that's gonna focus. This is the culture that I feed from. I have three different cultures, which I'll show you guys. Um, this is the one that I pick out the worms from, I feed from. I take a couple from the main cultures and I put them in here as well. And just to make my life a little bit easier, oh. I put them in this little Tupperware container. I don't know if you can see that guy wiggling around, but if the camera will focus on it, um, nope. Barely, somewhat, okay. But those are your Grindle worms. So the main fish that eat my Grindle worms are going to be my licorice gouramis. You can see them in there. And um, all of this little debris is actually leftover cocoa fiber from when I do feed from the feeder culture right here. And I don't know if you'll be able to see them a little wiggling around over here. But it's just easier to put a thin layer of the cocoa fiber in a little tub. And whenever I need to feed, I just grab this. And they're usually hanging around hanging about the side of the container and I just grab a couple pinches of that and throw it in there and my licorice garamis go crazy for it. I do feed them to the bettas as well but I mainly got this culture for the licorice garamis because they will not eat flake or pellet food. They barely eat frozen food as well. So live food is pretty much the only option for my licorice grow meats. So looking at the culture, it's pretty simple. This is leftover bedding from my Pac-Man frogs tanks. And what I do is I just make it really damp. Usually it's already damp. I add some fish food into it and the grindle worms just feed off of it. There's many different ways to culture your grindle worms. Um, I just prefer to use the cocoa fiber because once it's in the tank, it's not going to hurt the tank and it's very easy to just siphon out. But this is your adult grindle worm. See, it's nice and fat. And then you have itty bitty tiny guys like this. Oop. Rolled him right back into the culture, but once a every other day I put my schedule where I clean out the bed of tanks and I also mess with the cultures because it's very easy to forget about these cultures so once every other day what I do is I spray down the culture I take one side of the culture and I add some fish food I spray down that side and then I kind of get it all together like this mix it all up so that the worms can find each other and find their food and that is basically it that is the entire culture for my grindle worms this is another culture that I have I have not messed with it yet you can see that the top is pretty undisturbed um, I haven't dug into it yet but I want to see if I can find a good clump of worms. Usually when you find just one worm, 
in a clump like this. There's several in there, so when I drop it in the water, it dissolves, and then there's plenty of little itty bitty tiny worms for my fish to eat. Again, I'm not too worried about it fouling the tank. It's just as simple as grabbing a turkey baster and just siphoning out all that extra debris and stuff. Ooh, there's a juicy one. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop it into the garami tank. See if we can do a live feeding. that I have here what I do when I need to start up my or regenerate my feeding culture I grab a clump where I know there's worms I put it in my small tub and that's about it so this is a treat for you guys because this is my first time opening this container and these are my springtails. I don't know if this will focus on the camera. My temperate springtails. Now there's quite a bit in here. And I would planned on using springtails for a bioactive tank, but I don't know yet if I'm going to do what I had originally planned on doing um, I do know that I can use these springtails to feed my betta fish if I want I know they eat springtails but there's a good colony of them in there and I got these from Josh's frogs um, I get my crickets from them as well and these guys are fairly simple. These are the temperate springtails. You just sprinkle a little bit of their food on the top. Um, some people like to keep them in charcoal. I believe these are the ones that you have to keep with a little bit of soil. They like moisture. And yeah, those are my springtails. Quite a bit of them in there. So this is my little cricket container. Well, it's bigger than my normal container. This is my normal cricket container. This is my insanely larger cricket container. And the reason why I have it is because I had to order 236 crickets because of COVID-19. Um, I ordered mine from Josh's Frogs and I had to order that many crickets just because um, they don't want to keep shipping out many, many different orders. So they have advised us to go ahead and order the next smallest size, which is 250 um, banded crickets. I couldn't, I usually only order about, I think, 50 or so, but yeah, this is an insane amount of crickets, so I'm going to go ahead and put them into their little container right here, and get that all ready. 
Now, I have worked at a pet store, and the only thing I hate about these boxes is that sometimes you get spiders in them. And when we would get a shipment of about 2,000 crickets, usually this size, you would get thousands and thousands of tiny itty bitty spiders. And I'm not sure they even eat the crickets themselves. And uh, I'm just sticking my hand all in there. But um, the banded crickets, which I use, there's actually one molting there that's pretty cool. You can see them there. But the banded crickets that I'm using, I can only order them from Josh's Frogs. I'm sure there's other places where I can, but I've chose to stop using the local crickets that we get because the mortality rate of those is just ridiculous. I would get a dozen of them and half of them would be dead by the end of the day. So these guys are a lot more hardy. They don't grow as fast. I'm noticing as the locally caught crickets that I get from the LFS and these guys have a very interesting chirp too. You probably won't hear it because they're all stressed out right now but I only have about nine crickets in my usual container so they're gonna join this colony until it's time for them to get eaten as well. But yes this is 250 crickets there's another egg crate here i can't believe i am taking it down with just one hand so obviously this is an insane amount of crickets um i'll probably be sharing this order with another reptile keeper i only have two pac-man frogs they'll probably eat about five a day if i let them but i like to keep their diet very varied and there's just one guy here actually that's a molten cricket so that's not a dead guy let's see looks like one casualty two three no this is a cricket molt that's a cricket molt too so like i said these guys are very very hardy compared to the ones that you pick up at the local pet store and they're chirp I wish I could catch it on camera. I'll probably try to catch it later. But their chirp is very sharp. And not really as annoying to me as the other type of cricket. But, wow, this is a lot of crickets. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me in my pajamas. Showing you guys my feeder tubs. I keep so many different feeders and I plan on adding some vinegar eels and some more micro worms. I had micro worms in the past but we won't talk about that because I forgot about them. Anyway, um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me what you guys keep as feeders as well. Um, leave me a like. Leave me some comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me. Because you don't want to miss what I plan on doing with these.